Hi there, welcome to Silver Lining Art. My name is Anish and this video is quite special to me. It's about this beautiful bird, the Eurasian Eagle Owl. Some people like to call it the Indian Eagle Owl. The story of this bird and our relationship together goes way back. So I think when I was 13 or 14 years old, uh, my friend Veda, he called me and he said that he had seen a Eurasian eagle owl in front of a quarry in front of his house. And I was super excited because it is not a very common bird. It's quite a rare bird to find and it's also often very difficult to spot. So I, I went there with him and it still took us a, f a while, but we were able to find these owls and they're, they're amazing. They just massive and uh, they have this beauty and they, they, they look at you you know just like with these fierce eyes um, during the daytime they don't move very much so they are usually active very early in the morning and late in the evening so during the daytime when we are out <laughs> they're usually just sitting on a, on a rock uh, in the quarry and I was super excited to see them and I thought that I also have a quarry near my house on the other side of the city and I spent a few days walking around scanning the walls of the quarry near my house and I found a Eurasian eagle owl there as well and I was so ecstatic. At first actually I thought that it was the same Eurasian eagle owl that was in his quarry also was here so it was flying across the city hopping these quarries. Uh, but after a few days, I kept going back and kept seeing this one. At one point, I texted my friend and he was looking at the owl near his house and I was looking at the owl near my house. And so we knew uh, these were two different individuals. Months and I think years from then, every bit of free time I had, I would come back from school, drop my bag, grab a little snack and then head to the hill in front of my house where the quarry was. I would just spend time looking at them, observing their behavior. There are all these crows and uh, kites that are always bothering these owls. It's called mobbing behavior. That actually makes them quite easy to find. So if some crows have spotted an owl before you, then you actually have a much easier time finding the owl yourself because they keep nagging uh, the owl. And so you just have to look for nagging crows and you will find the owl. And uh, I also started to make a lot of observations. So one thing that owls do is uh, they puke out the pellet. So when they're uh, eating their prey, they will puke out, uh, if it's a mouse or something, they'll puke out like a ball of fur and bones and not defecate like, like we do. And I was able to capture some amazing photos of them in the process because they, it's, it's quite, a, it's just like two or three seconds. But I spent so much time with them that I got really good at anticipating their behavior. And that's like a key part of any good wildlife photographer. The better you know the organism, the species, the animal you're working with, the better your pictures will be. And I would also take these pellets, I would go collect them uh, later and look at uh, the, the bones and the hairs and try to find out what uh, these owls were eating or was their diet and the quarry here and after a while the owls also got really comfortable with me sometimes they would even fly closer to me I saw them uh, build a little nest I don't think they built a nest but they, they had this one spot where they like to hang out a lot and eventually I saw little baby owls over there uh, and I saw these babies grow up, I saw these babies learn to fly, I saw them leave the quarry, leaving parents uh, behind. And uh, eventually I also moved out of the city. I found out that just a few months after I left, the quarry had become a municipal waste dumping site. So when I came back six months ago, there was a lot of trash in, in the quarry and no owls to be found. And I, I was quite upset about it for a while. And I, th I think it's these connections, these encounters you have with the wildlife, or at least I do. This is what fuels me to do the work I do, to do the science, to pursue a career in conservation. I think it's this sort of very naive little emotional connect that is the fuel to doing the work that I do. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you did and want to watch more videos like this, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'll see you next time.